Number 15. Using the results from the above example on example 20.3, find the drift velocity of a copper wire of twice the diameter in carrying a 20 amp current. So uh, here's the problem. It says calculate drift velocity. This is uh, example 20.3. 12 gauge copper wire. Here's the diameter. Here's the current. The current's the same. And it says that it has one free electron per copper atom. They also tell us the uh, density all right, of the copper. So in order to find the drift velocity, we need to know, well, what formula has drift velocity in it, right? And it turns out that this is the formula, that the current will equal the electron density N multiplied by the charge, basically of an electron, a charge per uh, charge particle, multiplied then by the cross-sectional area of the wire, then multiplied by the uh, drift velocity. So if I want to find drift velocity, all I have to do is divide these three variables on over to the left-hand side. And here's our equation for drift velocity. So I need to know three things, okay? What's the current? Well, it told us in the problem 20 amps. So that's nice and easy. This is 20, okay? So we're gonna plug in 20. What is the electron uh, density, N? Well, there's a way to calculate it. You can do dimensional analysis, or what I've done is I've created a little formula here for you. I explained this in the prior problem, so check out number 14. I'm going to run through this one a little faster, okay? So what we do is we plug in the electric charge of the uh, charged atom. Here they said it's copper. It has one free electron. Therefore, the electric charge of it is negative one. Keep in mind, I'm going to take the absolute value, all right? So you can just plug in a positive one. Then what we're going to do, since they don't tell us any mass of sorts, all right, we're going to assume that we have, or we're using the molar mass. And therefore, the molar mass of copper, you look this up in the periodic table, it's 63.54. That's grams per mole. Now, you know we need things in kilograms, but that's why I put the 1,000 here to kind of do a little conversion for you. All right, so you don't have to worry about, you know, doing any conversion. This is literally the molar mass that you can plug in right from the periodic table. If you're using the molar mass, you're going to then uh, use the number of atoms in a mole. All right. Uh, which is, you know, that's Avogadro's number, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. And last but not least, then you need the density. All right, the density here of copper, you need it in kilograms per cubic meter. Fortunately, they gave that to us. It's going to be 8.8 .8 times 10 to the 3rd. And then all we have to do is just plug it on into the calculator. All right. So we take 1, basically, and multiply by 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. Multiply that by then 8.8 .8 times 10 to the third. Multiply that by 1,000 and then divide it by 63.54. And here we get an electron density of about 8.34 or so times 10 to the 28th. And the units here would be number of electrons basically per cubic meter. That represents electron density. The next thing is we have to then find the, so that was N, right? We have to then not find, but just plug in Q. So what's the charge? Now, this is the charge of the uh, free particle that you're talking about. Here it says one free electron. So what's the charge of an electron? Negative 1.6 times 10 to the 19th. Okay. Coulombs, that is. You know those are the standard units. And now we need to find the area. So recall that the area is simply going to be pi r squared. You're dealing with a wire, so you know the cross-sectional area is a circle, right? You know the diameter, it said that it's not this anymore, it's going to be twice that amount, okay? So twice that amount works out to be, the diameter would then be 4.106, right? If I had to double that. So then, what's then the radius? Well, the radius would then be half of this, and what's half of that? Oh, wait a minute, it's that same number, right? So... What we realize now is that the radius is going to be 2.053, but it's in millimeters. We need it in meters. Multiply that by then 10 to the minus 3. All right, and square it, and then we will get our area. So the area here will be pi multiplied by 2.053 times 10 to the minus 3, and square that. So here I get a value of about 1.32 times 10 to the minus fifth. So we take that and we now plug it into our formula 1.32 times 10 to the minus fifth. And now we can find the 
drift velocity basically because we know all those variables. So what do we get? So it's going to be 20 then divided by parentheses. I'm going to use all the exact values. So this 8.3 blah 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 times then 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19th. And it's negative, don't forget that. And then multiply by 1.32 times 10 to the minus fifth. So this works out to be about 1.14 or so times 10 to the, um, what do we get? Uh, minus fourth. And that's in meters per second. It's negative. All the negative sign tells us here is that it's moving, the electrons are moving in the opposite direction of the conventional current. Okay. Great. Anyway, guys, hopefully this helps. Please remember to help us out and subscribe. Hit that like button and tell your classmates. We appreciate it very, very much, and we'll see you soon. Take care.